The first component or the first stage in the ADDI paradigm that we're going to look at is the analyze stage. Now the purpose of this stage or this phase is to determine the causes of the performance gap. You'll remember from the video ADDI a paradigm or an overview sorry um, that you have the actual performance of your learners and you have the desired performance of your learners and the gap that exists in between those is a performance gap or performance discrepancy. So the analyze stage is to figure out which of those can be determined to be um, skills and knowledge which can be determined to be resources and which can be determined to be a lack of motivation and it's only that first one the skills and resource or skills and knowledge sorry that we can actually use training to close now if you look at the analysis phase there are actually six parts to the analysis phase if you look at the addition or if you look at the videos that are we have under the analyze um, unit or the analyze folder in Blackboard, you'll see that there are presentations for the first four because those are the ones that we're going to focus upon. Um, the fifth one, recommend potential delivery systems, that basically means how you believe the training is going to be delivered and you need to include multiple systems. Um, so you need to give the client a choice of at least two potential methods for delivery. Um, typically in this day and age that tends to be classroom delivery or some sort of computer assisted instruction including web based instruction um, but that tends to be the one and you want to give them estimates as to how much that will cost the other thing you want to do is propose a project management plan and I know there is a course in project management that you will some of you may have done already as part of your instructional technology courses um, for others in the program it may be something that's still a couple of courses off um, one of the reasons we don't focus upon it here is because you'll do a lot with that when you get to that course um, what we're looking at here is sort of the bare bones of it now the results of your analysis phase or your analysis summary which is the deliverable that you would have from the analysis phase is going to allow you to figure out if training will close the performance gap and again training will only be effective in closing the percentage of the gap that is based upon knowledge and skills so if you have a performance gap um, and if you've determined that 40% of it is due to knowledge and skills, another 40% of it is due to lack of resources, and 20% is due to motivation. When you go to the client, you have to tell them that the best that you can do is close 20% of, or sorry, 40% of the gap. And that's the 40% that deals with knowledge and skills. Um, once you've proposed to them the percentage or the degree in which to which training will actually close the gap then you need to recommend strategies based upon the data that you collected during your analysis phase so those four steps that you were looking at there um, the first four the the assessing the performance determining the instructional goals analyzing the learners and then auditing the available resources that's the data that you're going to use to recommend potential strategies not just delivery systems but strategies about how training could be successful in that individual's environment again if you are looking at the gap and based upon your analysis summary if the gap is due to something other than knowledge or skills such as motivation such as resources your analysis summary should provide your client with feedback about how they can go about closing the gap using something other than training so what sort of things they can do to increase um, employee motivation or what they can do to provide additional resources however if your analysis summary determined that the gap is due or proportion of their percentage of the gap is due to a lack of knowledge or skills then you can propose to tr uh, possible training options and you should also develop a purpose statement for that training
your analysis summary, and this is the document that you're going to have, is going to have seven components. Um, the first, it's going to have the results of your performance assessment. It will conclude. It, it will include a succinct pur purpose statement, and one of the videos in this particular unit will go through, and I think the notes do a really good job at looking at how to construct a purpose statement. It will list off a set of instructional goals that you want the training to achieve. Um, it will include the results of both the learner analysis and the resources that are required to do the training and you should indicate in that list of requi or, sorry, required resources which ones that the client currently has and that's the purpose of doing the resource audit so you can determine which ones they have and then which ones that they will need to get based upon the ones that are required. Always give them at least two potential delivery systems, ways in which they can deliver this particular training, including how much those things would cost, and then provide them with a project management plan. Now the project management plan isn't necessarily a plan for the training. It's a plan for how you propose to go through the instructional design process with the client, um, including timelines. Now, once you've got your analysis summary, you've got those seven items put together, that's when you would have your client meeting. Now, one of two things is going to happen during the client meeting. The first thing is that the client is going to be happy with your work. Um, you're going to get his endorsement. You're going to get the sign-off that you need. And then you're going to move on to the next phase of the ADI process, which would be the design phase. Um, however, if the client isn't happy with your product, there's a couple of things that could happen. The first thing is that obviously that you don't get the contract and um, after doing the analysis the client decides to go with someone else or decides that they're just not going to bother with training at all. Or they may make you go back and redo some of the work that you've done. Um, when you're in that meeting you want to get a list from the client as to the specific changes that they want made in your analysis summary and get the the client to sign off on those changes so that both you and the client have an understanding of this is what needs to be done. Then you want to go back and do the port redo the portions of the analysis summary um, or the analysis work I should say that is needed in order to update the analysis summary to address the changes that the client requested. Um, once you've done that then you want to reset submit the analysis summary and hopefully the client will be satisfied this time and you can obtain your endorsements and move on to the design phase.